Hello and welcome back to our OS and virtual memory module. In the previous segment we have talked about the concept of a memory manager. Our memory manager has three roles. One to provide translation between the virtual addresses and the physical addresses. Two to provide protection between the processes so then they don't overrun each other in the memory. And three, uh, it provides a mechanism for swapping some chunks of data from the DRAM to the disk. Let's take a look at how does this swapping actually work and how is it is, is being performed. Generally, it is a good idea to always move um, a constant amount of data, constant chunk of data, fixed chunk of data between the DRAM and the disk. Remember, simplicity is what we strive for in computer architecture. So we don't want to have some variable amount of data. It will be difficult to address. We don't want to have a fixed amount of data that we are going to move between the, the memory and the disk. And um, that chunk of data is going to be called a page. In most modern, modern operating systems, it is called the page. So what we are dealing with is a concept of a paged memory system. How large is a page? Well, um, it shouldn't be very small because we don't want to go too frequently um, uh, to the disk because operations with a disk are expensive in terms of time. On the other hand, we want, don't want to have too large of a chunk that we would like to move. Most modern operating systems pick a page size of 4 KB, 4 kilobytes. And that also is conveniently a multiple of the minimum um, addressable um, block in hard disk drives, which is 512 bytes. Um, so um, 4 kilobits is the minimum amount of data that we can uh, retrieve from a hard disk. So the page size is set to be 4 kilobytes or 4 KB. Remember, um, RISC V is a byte addressable ISA, so every byte within the page should be addressable. How many, by, uh, how many bits do we need to address uh, 4 um, kilobytes? Uh, 4096 words? Well, we need 12 bits for that. So, if you have a 32-bit address space, uh, we should split it into two parts in, uh, in our virtual addresses. The lower 12 bits will be used for addressing bits within the page and the upper 20 bits will be the addresses of the pages or the page numbers. How many pages can we have? Uh, well, whatever 20 bits gets us, which is 2 to the 20 or a million pages. So 32 bit address space gives us a million pages and 4096 bytes within each of the pages. All right. So let's see how does this work with our man memory manager. Remember our conceptual mem memory manager assigns some part of the memory to each of these processes. Um, all, every single process has access to the full memory, but they generally don't use all, all of the memory. Um, each process often has the big donut hole that is in between the heap and the stack that is empty, unused memory. In this concept here, it is shown that it is using continuous memory, that is allocating continuous memory chunks to each of the processes. But in the practice, when we look at it, the page memory essentially shuffles these pages as it likes, as it is convenient to it. So the address tr translation happens here through the page tables. There are each process is assigned a page table to it that is managed by the operating system. So all virtual addresses are essentially point to the page table. Page ta table entries are the physical addresses of the memory that is in DRAM. So if this first process is the orange or California gold process that is using three pages, you know, three uh, 4096 byte chunks, then these 
California Gold pages can be spread across the memory. The yellow process may be using four pages that can be in their different locations in the memory. And finally, the blue process may be just using um, a blue, um, one blue uh, page. And obviously, these pages don't need to be consecu uh, located consecutively in the memory. It is up to the OS where does it find it convenient to put them. And not all of them uh, need to be in DRAM. Some of them may be swapped to the disk. Again, these page tables are managed by the operating system. Let's take a look at this first role of the memory manager. The memory manager here provides the memory address translation. This memory address translation is happening from the virtual address space to the physical address space. And it is done by retaining the offset. The offset stays untouched. The page table entry is used as a lookup to the page table to produce the actual page number or the physical address of the page. Now, notice that physical addresses may, but don't have to have more or fewer bits than the virtual addresses. Remember, in my computer, um, Virtual addresses are 48 bits, physical addresses are 39 bits. So let's take a look a little bit uh, in a little bit more detail into this process of address translation. So operating system keeps track of which process is active when the process takes um, con uh, takes over the the, the processor, um, its page table becomes active as well. It is a part of the state that corresponds to that process. So then memory manager extracts the page number from the virtual address. It takes the top 20 bits from the virtual address and retains the 12 bits and saves the, the, the lower 12 bits. So looks up that uh, page table entry in the, in the page table and computes the physical memory address from the sum of the page address and the offset, or actually um, concatenation of the page uh, number, page address, and the 12 offset bits. Okay, let's take a look at how does it perform its second role, the protection. Um, so assigning different pages in DRAM to processes keeps them from accessing uh, each other's memory. So this allows processes to be isolated from each other, and these page tables are not handled by the by the processing themselves they're managed by the os in the supervisory mode now you may ask what happens if we need to share the data between two multiple processes um, well that's possible uh, there would be a bit that would flag that a particular page is shareable between the processes so the os will assign the same physical page to two different uh, virtual addresses in uh, two different processes. And that will permit us to share data between the processes. Okay, how do we make sure that we do not write over um, certain pages that should not be writable? Well, generally there would be a um, bit that uh, indicates that a page um, is write protected. So it, we can do that with a single bit that would be somewhere in this page table. So page tables in addition to these physical addresses as their entries are going to have some flags, single bits that will be indicated things something about the status of that page. So for example those that are write protected may have their bits set to one. So if you try to write to a uh, write protected page that would throw an exception um, and then the OS would be handling that exception. We'll let you know about that. Okay, now another important thing here, we understand how, uh, understand how does this whole translation happen and the, the protection, how, does the, how is the protection implemented, but where are these page tables? Are they inside the processor? Are they yet another separate chunk of memory? 
Well, let's think a little bit about that. Um, how many pages are there? And how big are these pages? So if you have a 32-bit virtual address with four KB pages, a single page table will have two to the 20 entries and each entry will be four bytes wide. So this is four megabytes, four MB. Um, that's not a lot uh, for a laptop like this. If, if a laptop has four gigabytes of memory, then that would be just 0.1% of the, of the physical memory space. But that's typically just too much for a cache. Um, that's you know comparable to the size of a cache. Cache would not be containing anything else other than the current page um, uh, page table. So we can't store pages inside the processor. We can't store them in a cache. They're too big. They would have to reside in the memory. There is a consequence of that. In order to perform a load or a store, we need to now make two trips to the memory. We first need to get the, the page table from the memory. And then when we have that, when we have the actual physical address, we can perform the load or a store. Well, that's inconvenient. We rem remember accesses to the uh, to the memory are expensive. They are, these are compensated by the use of a cache. Page tables, not the entire page tables, but parts of the page tables will be cached. Those that are frequently accessed, that the frequently accessed entries in the page table will be cached because our cache replacement policy is going to support that. So that is what is going to, to speed up. So most of the time we are not, we don't need to make two trips to the DRAM in order to load or store data. It is going to be residing in the cache. So both our data and the, the, the page entries, page table entries are going to be residing in the cache. So, um, just in a quick summary, our page tables are going to be stored in the memory. So, whenever we are referencing something, uh, so, some, some data in the memory, we are going to first reference the page table, and that page table is going to reference the actual page. And that is going to happen for every process. We are going to take a look in a little bit more detail of what else is in these page tables after the break. See you then.